video. Yeah, <laughs> I made one of those in a while. Anyway, um, let's see what, what else? Very lovely man. Anyway, um, okay. So I, you know, I really don't want to make videos I've already made. So you know, blah blah blah. So <laughs> yeah, just don't have any incentive. So, but exceptions will be made. So Trick has been doing these conversations with Nihilist. And it's just such a waste of time. But anyway, you're stuck with it. There's nothing else happening. Anyway, anyway. Um, alright. So how do, how do you even get to this? Alright, so people have this understanding of logic. And they say, okay, well there's this thing called logic. And somehow they don't associate the logic with the fact that the facts, the actual facts, add up to something. And they do it through kind of exclusion, as funny as that sounds, but that's sort of how it works, right? If you say 2 plus 5 equals 7, what you're basically doing is saying, I'm excluding when I say 2, 3, 5, 10, 12, and when I say 5, I'm saying 5, not 6, not 4. And now you're excluding what can the answer can possibly be because you have two statements that are exclusionary that just eliminate you saying you know pink pigeons are lovely no that's not what's in there five isn't pink pigeons are lovely so that isn't going to work <laughs> you can't uh, you can't come up with a conclusion that doesn't have anything to do with the two and the five and what the two and the five have excluded from being possibly right now, your answer, you can say almost anything as an answer for 2 plus 5. But it will be easily, um, probably, um, destroyed as being truthful or accurate. And um, because it's going to end up being flawed. And that's all that, you know. But your answer is basically, the idea is, is that you can make an answer that will be as certain as the two things you added up. So as long as you're certain about the two and certain about the five, there'll be a equals that's also a certain answer. It is true. Um, you can try to defeat it, but you won't be able to defeat it if you did it right. If you got the right answer. If you added the two facts correctly, they'll give you a third fact that is as indestructible as the first two. That's the idea. So it's all about where the facts point, as I've said many times. Um, that's doing logic. And there's obvious mistakes, non-contradiction, uh, you know. <laughs> or just repeating what one of the facts says without even adding the second fact, or simple things like that. But anyway, um, so to this conversation thing. I wish they just have an MP3. Nobody shows a face, so what's the difference? Um, but anyway, it doesn't really matter. Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, I always thought, I don't know why YouTube never provided MP3. I mean, why does that have to be a video? Stupid. Anyway, um, you know, or even images that, uh, you know, you could do a slideshow of images that wasn't a video. Uh, separate subject probably maybe why the world is a stupid shithole is quite obvious it's because people are stupid pieces of shit and uh, so yeah we have to live in shit <sighs> this is really irritating all right um so trick has um, stated that he thinks that there really is some is odd gap he's just defining a new one so as if the other assholes who were saying, well, you can't really get from facts to an ought, you know, you should, <laughs> yeah. you must, you're logically obligated, which means you're factually obligated. That's what logic means. If you say somebody's logically obligated, then they're factually obligated. The facts point there. There's no other... The seven's the answer. That's it. You're stuck. The truth is what it is. So anyway, the idiots, the one group of idiots, says that 
there's no there, there's no there's there's a gap between facts and and shoulds or oughts that somehow based in this idea that there are no facts you know that there are no facts regarding anything of value so you can't say that suffering sucks or torture is intrinsically bad um, that's somehow not true even though there's no possible way to make it true in and of itself there's no possible way there's no counter fact that can in any way damage or dent the simple truth that torture is always intrinsically bad uh, in and of itself the experiencing of brutal or harsh sensations of the negative character can never be made a good thing in and of itself um, so now Trick just adds a new one and says even if you come up with a really good description of bad people aren't obligated not to do bad wait a minute logically well, how could they be logically obligated to do anything else it explained to me, Mr. Trick, what exactly the logical theory of once you've established something to be intrinsically bad and you're only going to do that single intrinsic thing and you have a choice that is purely clean to not do it, what logic could possibly provoke you to do bad when you don't have to do it, when it's completely unnecessary? What, what what would be the logic? What logical cause or purpose could be constructed? I would claim, obviously, none. That's within the realm of, unless you come up with some non-intrinsic circumstance, some contextual circumstance. Well, that's because the, you know, actually there's a, some sort of the aliens from another dimension, the old universe that came into our universe and turned everything upside down so we don't really understand. No, 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 no. You can't use that shit. As the facts stand, um, and as they're known, there's no logical escape from having to do what's right if you have a free choice to do right or wrong. There's none. There's no... And you can't construct a fucking justification. You can't construct a, a logical purpose. It's just a stupid thing to say there's some gap. There's no fucking gap. Just, a, you know, I don't know why he's doing this shit, because I don't think he actually believes it, to tell you the truth. I don't think he thinks there's any real gap. I think he just wants to agree with the gap, or so he can say, oh, I agree with your gap. I think it's still blah, 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 even though I agree with you. When he's not... First of all, he's not agreeing on the same gap point. So what good is it to add another gap point? It's just stupid. All right, so let's play this shit. I'm doing it just because of one word, because I thought the one word was just bang. There's the word. You know, why, why didn't he do something? He just said it. There's no, you know, he said the, he said the magic fucking word. So I'll let you have some suspense. Let's play a little. The whole methodology. Um, right, so, so yeah, I, I think, so that's first and foremost question, is there a right thing to do? In the biggest general sense that, that I mean it, that it contains the art, your answer is flat no. Uh, and, and if you're that, injecting the art within it, then yes. I think it's a mistake to do that. Yeah, yeah, it's a mistake. <laughs> a mistake to come up with a prescription <clears throat> And to have the um, already settled logic that the prescription has value, that it is, in fact, has merit. You didn't bother making the prescription because it didn't have merit. You did it exactly for that purpose, to exclude all possible choices through the chain of logic and come up with the right answer. This is the maximum solution. This is the highest efficiency will be achieved. This is the right answer. And then you say, there's no logical obligation to be obedient to the right answer. Bullshit. But I, I think everybody does. And, and it, we can just broaden the sentence, but that's what I mean. 
um, is the... Yeah, so Hathaday, ironically, the guy who doesn't believe suffering really sucks, intrinsically, um, is the asshole now arguing with Trick about his stupid gap and pointing out how I think your gap is nonsensical because, yeah, everybody on Earth has already accepted those terms, that if you come up with the right answer, you would be logically obligated to uh, take it seriously. Sir, uh, you say it better, the, the longer sentence, but you know what I mean. And I, I think then you have failed in the task of ethics. Yeah? Because I disagree. I, because ethics only applies to the yeah. assessment of what is right and what is wrong, what is good, what is bad. That's all ethical assessments. Uh, Right, and it really doesn't mean anything if you're not if ethics means you're you ought not to pay any attention, <laughs> then it doesn't mean anything. Obviously, the ought is there. Um, there's no ethics without ought. There really isn't. Okay, just doing erroneous descriptions that have no meaning, that are not to be taken seriously, would be a pointless enterprise. Description for the sake of description is not ethics. Description for the purpose of oughting is, that does make sense. And it does make sense to call that ethics because it is a, a, an endeavor um, to actualize, uh, to, to make the value, to improve a circumstance. That's the whole point of having a conversation about ethics is because it's a management tool not because it's an unmanagement tool. It's not some sort of for, um, you know, the sake of argument or for, uh, what's the word they use for that when you're just having an academic conversation. A a you know, ethics is not an academic conversation. It's a conversation of application. Without application, there's no point in having the conversation. Um, if you're saying I fail in the... In the uh, prescriptive part of ethics, I disagree with that as well. I, I just because somebody doesn't have a universal prescription doesn't mean you can't prescribe. It just means that this prescription is contingent. But contingent on what? Right not being right and wrong not being wrong. So you just sit there and say somehow they are suspect. Somehow this idea of right and wrong or good and bad or up and down is somehow suspect. Well, like gravity and like all this other shit, it's not suspect. It's a real fucking goddamn thing. And you to sit there and just claim that it's somehow reasonably disputed. It's not reasonably disputed. It's not rationally disputed. It's only ludicrously disputed. Fuck. But the prescription isn't important to the ethic itself. And the prescription is important. Well, I think it is. I think it, the prescription is that the entire function of the word ethics. There's just no point in the conversation otherwise. Ethic itself is descriptive, and it needs to be descriptive. Well, I, I say you fail because in that description, is it's completely arbitrary on accepting your definition of bad. It's not a definition. It is a description. <laughs> yeah, again, it's a description of no meaning. If it doesn't have meaning, if it doesn't have any um, authority, um, then it doesn't. It isn't a real description. You're not really saying it's bad then, because the only way you could not do what is mandated by the description, the only way you could not follow the description, and the description it is a prescription. Um, is to somehow say that isn't what you think it is. Somehow there's something missing. Badness is inherent descriptively. Of course it's a definition. Of it course it's a definition. All words have a definition, but the, the definition applies to the description of the No, 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 it's value. Like, that's what, where you're circular, and that where it, it becomes a mere assertion by yourself to justify what you actually want to achieve. I think that's just a bullshit argument. There's nothing circular in describing the good and the bad. There's something just plain stupid in saying that bad doesn't mean uh, it's a prescription. As soon as you say good or bad, as soon as you say I have the right answer, the prescription's there. Say you fail because um, 
if, if, if anybody wants to stand up to that description and say, no, I'm just a state, you can label out how you want, right? But, and, but the truth is, when I'm in this state, I report these things, I say I feel this way within length, just so you can understand. All right, so he's just basically talking about the fact that there's these, the fact is we have these experiences, we report the experience. His argument is, is why should anyone care what experiences are, which doesn't make any sense because we know bad is bad, is bad is bad, broken leg is broken leg is broken leg, AIDS virus is AIDS virus is AIDS virus, we hate it no matter where it is. It doesn't have to be in us can be anywhere and it's just plain hateable and that i'm feeling this way but i feel this way and that's it nobody asks nobody it's not obligatory or uh, incumbent upon anybody to be bothered about the way i feel well again logically if you've defined the bad as the sensation of course it is I don't care about you or your personality or this or that or all this other crap or what's your favorite food. No, I don't have to know you personally. I don't have to give a shit about you personally to understand the nature of the enemy. And the enemy is the suffering. Durr. I've said that many, many times. I think that's a truth, a fact. It's, I'm just in a state. If I tell you about it, you now understand what state. If the state is negative or positive and we can move to or away from those negative and positive states then it is obligatory if somebody can, is concerned about uh, yeah it's obligatory if somebody is concerned about so I'll, I'll play with that one for a minute what is no if somebody respects the negative quality so it has nothing to do with this concerned about crap trick so you fell into your own trap um it doesn't, uh, no one needs to invoke any concern rule, <laughs> okay? There's no rule of concern. No, it's a logical obligation, and you either meet the logical obligation or you fail to meet it, but there is no, there's no other truth here, all right? So that's just bullshit, concern. Concern is just another word for you either recognize that the bad is bad or you don't recognize that the bad is bad. So again, you're bad, back to your bad argument. So they're rejecting your fundamental argument that bad is bad. Ethics. If, if they care about being ethical. Definition. If they care about being ethical. Well, again, the argument is constructed as a logical argument. And, and so you can't, have, you can't claim an innocent ought gap if you're going to say logic doesn't apply once I get to the equal sign. So that's, there's no logical gap, so how can there be an is-ought gap? If you're going to bother doing logic to acquire your is's, there's no point in saying, well, no logic needs to be in the answer. Fuck that. That, it, that, it, that this is bad. It is bad. No, it's, it's, not, it's not my definition. It, this, this is, it, it's descriptive, not... Dis no, not no, no. Okay, right. So you, you're going to describe a state that I'm in. Right, you're gonna use some words. One it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that you, if you're in it or or if it's just floating around. I, I didn't the say it I was just put. I didn't say you know. I'm just wait. It's just me and you here. When I use me as myself, it's just an instance. Okay, but but I, but I, I just want to be clear that it doesn't. It, it, it really doesn't matter that it's I, I in, don't in a person. It, it, it could just be floating around the universe, and if if you get access to it. Ugh, okay. Well, I don't want to get this, you know, convoluted. I, I, I should have gone back a little bit further, apparently. Apparently. Oh, now the little back thing isn't reading what time it is. Damn. Um, I have to go back to, like, here. So, uh, to get the magic word. <laughs> yeah. I missed it. That's, that's correct. I, uh... Someone doesn't have to be logical either. Let, uh, here we go it's back the same a little thing. further. So, I guess you gotta be safe. No, what, no, that's too far back. Um, that's too far back. Our actions are too far back. Our ethics applies to. That's where we get the ethical action. That's descriptive. <sighs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, you, you're. So once you have this. Once, once you have the establishment of, of, of this idea of bad, wherever it happens, it's kind of your description of ethics that the game of ethics is, it's, and, and all the language contained therein, is to minimize the 
bomb. It's to yeah, to minimize the bad or move. I'm just saying that it's once you've established the definition of bad as a word and good as a word and positive as a word and negative as a word, they're established as definers of this idea, okay, of a deficit, of a below acceptable. So you could have this line that says acceptable and then you can have something that's below the line and something that's above the line. So, I mean, there's lots of ways to explain that weight. Um, being destroyed, not being destroyed, um, damaged, not damaged. So you can just use lots of metaphors to describe the concept that it's either it cannot be in this condition where it is eaten alive or something because it won't exist and that's the bad and blah, 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 blah. So there's lots of ways to get to the point that bad and good mean something. One state it is growing and one state it is uh, desiccating move away from the bad or um, prevent the bad and uh, no, no what's and like you say this is where you know i guess uh, there is a severe demarcation between you and Mendel because yeah there is i take it pretty severely there's nothing to say and that's where you allow for the azot gap i suppose there's nothing to say that i i can't justifiably reject that there we go i can justifiably reject that and say but i don't want to play that game there we go i can justifiably reject that and say i don't want to play that game i don't want to play by this oh you came up with a right answer rule right answers mean something <laughs> yeah but anyway i'm saying so my first argument is to trick why why bother with that crap then my argument to Hothlidae to answer, answer his question is, you're saying you have a justification. Well, I want to hear the justification. Go ahead. Explain it to me. Explain how it's possible to justify it by saying something rational. Though You can't say something like, I don't want to play by the logic game now. We went to the trouble to logically find an answer. Now I don't wish to be logical. How that's logically acceptable. That somehow that would be a statement of truth. That your <laughs> that that the value of logic is preserved even when you stop being logical, right? If we concede, if we could agree that one of the facts that we're analyzing is that logic is the best hope of getting a right answer, that you have little hope without it, um, without following those rules, um, that. Um, you know, now you're saying that somehow now, like I said, after we found a clean answer, we did this hard logical thing. We beat at it a lot to find out that, yes, this conclusion is pretty rock solid. All the little pieces are rock solid, rock solid solution. Um, and it now excludes a ton of behaviors. And you're just saying, no, I can include all those stupid behaviors because I can ignore all the exclusions that have been created by all the facts that have already been put together. And that's just, how could that logically make sense? Again, it wouldn't make any sense to say, I've retained the integrity of my thinking logically by ignoring logic. No, you can't do that. So once you, once you say, I'm escaping the logical rules, then you've just basically said, fuck you, I've got no brain. I mean, I'm not going to do braining thing anymore. I'm not going to do anything sensible. So I'm going to be insensible. Your justification can only be insensible. So the key word was justification. He said, um, I could with any justification. Well, you have to have one. And so if, if there's a nothing universe with nothing in it but a ball of suffering, <laughs> and you have the power to stop the suffering, and you have no logical reason to maintain it, and there's every kind of logical reason to stop it, why would you why why would the description of this is a waste of suffering that's what's on the thing you figured out it's a waste of suffering and now you're saying that i logically am not compelled there's no ought there's no establishment of 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 any kind of obligation to do the simple thing of stopping the wasted suffering and I'm saying there's no logical justification. There's no justification you can make, no rational justification to not fix that. None. And maintain that you're logical. 
because it's a, it's like I said, every fact that it was built on is exclusionary. This the the answer is exclusionary. There's only one right piece of behavior. There's only one right reaction to that truth. That's it. It's excluded all the others. It's excluded all your other justifications. There are none now. There's a right answer. You either obey it or you failed to obey logic. All right, that's probably enough. So I haven't, I haven't suffered through the rest of this yet. You know, this is only the first 40 minutes. I mean, these are just, this is just no fun at all. Um, I mean, this is an imbecilic conversation to have to have about the, the existence of, of better and lesser outcomes in the world. Uh, it's just as silly as silly could be. Like I said, I've, I've said it, I mean, but I, I, you know, there's more hope for religious kooks. At least they got heaven and hell right. At least they know <laughs> that there's every logical reason to be afraid of eternal damnation in torture hell. <laughs> yeah, at least they're smart enough to figure that out. <sighs> Fuck. That would be a very bad consequence. <sighs> Shit. So, anyway, it's the next time. Who knows when. Been busy, you know, and working depressing. <laughs> I guess, yeah, there's been a lot of little things in my way lately. I just had a lot of, you know, I still do, so, yeah. So, be my quiet period. Until next time, whenever that will be.